J.K. Rowling grew up in Gloucestershire, England, and always knew she wanted to be an author. As a child, she was constantly writing and telling stories to her younger sister Diane. Both of her parents came from impoverished backgrounds, and neither attended college. Rowling had some very difficult years when she was younger, but she never had it as bad as Harry living with the Dursleys. She described her teenage years as being filled with difficulty. When Rowling was 15, her mother was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. She died a decade later, before Rowling became a published author. She went to college to study French, and graduated in 1986. After graduating from college, Rowling worked at the research desk doing translation work. She found her work important, but it wasn't entirely to her liking. She openly admits to being one of the most disorganised people in the world, and the worst secretary ever. She also admits that she would spend her time at work typing up stories when no one was looking. So when did she start writing Harry Potter then? Rowling came up with the idea for Harry Potter on a delayed train from Manchester to London's King's Cross station. She would then spend the next five years working on the story. However, in the midst of it all, tragedy struck. Rowling lost her mum at the age of 25. The day she lost her mother was the most traumatising day of her life. At 26, fed up with her office job, moved to Portugal to teach English. There she met and married Portuguese television journalist Jorge Arantes and had a child, Jessica. The two of them would break up shortly after Jessica's birth. Shortly after the breakup, Rowling headed back to the UK. Being a single mother was a struggle in itself. Yet that wasn't the only struggle she would face at the time. Rowling was freshly divorced, broke and jobless living on the government handouts. All of these struggles led to her depression. She even considered committing suicide. Unable to hit her flat, she sat in cafes, took bus rides and wrote Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone while her daughter slept in a pram. It was the worst chapter of her life. She openly admits that during that time she really was as poor as it's possible to go in the UK without being homeless. But even then, when her life was dark and gloomy, she found the light at the end of the tunnel always pushing through the trials and tribulations that life would throw at her. She never gave up. When she finally completed the book, she faced a lot of rejection from publishers. She was rejected 12 times before she had found someone to publish Harry Potter. A small publishing house accepted to publish the book, and only 1,000 copies were published. The book was published on the 30th of June 1997 and became an instant success. So what can we learn from J.K. Rowling's life? She's one of the most successful women in the world. Because she made the choice to keep going even when times were tough, she never gave up. She's very talented, but if she hadn't have chosen to keep going, her talent would be completely unknown today. Her story proves the point that it's our daily choices that really shape our future. It is us who are the creators of our own destiny. Never give up on yourself, never give up on your dreams, and never stop believing that things will one day get better. You might just end up like J.K. Rowling, rebuilding your life after reaching rock bottom. Remember, best ideas and problem solutions come to us unexpectedly. By year 2000, J.K. Rowling had become the highest earning woman in Britain, with an income of more than £20.5 million. In 2004, Forbes reported that Rowling was the first person to become a billionaire by writing books.